It's a story about a hostage negotiator called Dominic King and about his, his life and how he really deals in, in, the, in the world of negotiation in relation to his family and to, uh, and to the actual kidnappers and the, the hostage. So it's not just a drama about a one-off kind of uh, kidnap situation. It's a character-filled piece um, that explores really how a hostage negotiator lives his life. Aren't you going to eat with us? I've made no, dinner. Later. You're all done, by the way. Thanks. Is she all right? I don't know, John. We wanted to really get away from traditional crime or procedural uh, genres and so in a way we've created a kind of mini genre within the genre setup and found that the sort of profile of a hostage negotiator fitted me quite well, not in temperament, I'm nothing like them, but um, in terms of age uh, and the possibility to give the man a history that would be credible to somebody like me. So this is what you do? Negotiate with criminals, reward them for committing their crimes? Well, I like to think of my job as returning people to their families. He would have been SAS or whatever, you know, maybe not special unit, but some, and would have been um, active. To the beginning of the, of the sort of millennium, he would have faded out and got a desk job and then just quit because they, they can't go from, he couldn't go from that to being sedentary. And thinks he'll retire and fish and do the rest of it. And like four of them that I met, they can't, they get brought into the world of security and they realize there's a way back to that being in the field sensation through, through this. I was fortunate to have, you know, a pretty good production team around me. So what I did very, very much is we all worked together to get the thing up to the shoot point. And then I became an actor, which I think is sort of the only thing to be, because you have to relate to the other actors as actors and be able to moan about the producers. You can't sort of defend you. You can't, you know, be on both sides. Hello. Dominic King. Yes. Can I ask you what your name is? We might be talking quite a lot, so what would you like me to call you? Don't call me anything. I think that with John Hanna, I've always thought that he's got tremendous potential to play um, against what he normally um, portrays, because I just think he's got such an incredible face. And I wanted to see him as a sort of uh, laconic villain, as opposed to, you know, a sort of a good person. And I didn't think, he, and I thought he would be, as he is, sort of effortlessly bad. Two million dollars, that's what I want. That sort of money doesn't exist. Well, then goodbye. No, we can talk about this. Talk all you want. She's dead. We didn't want a sort of um, a consciously evil performance, you know, the uber villain at the end. We wanted someone who, you know, he's someone that went wrong in the military, stayed out there as a sort of opportunist, um, a renegade kind of guy which there are a lot of those around out there. Um, and uh, that was great. I mean, I really, I really enjoyed him. 400,000. You've already got 100,000. Half a million dollars. We'd kind of constructed um, our, our world of what we believed a hostage negotiation and negotiated to be like. And then we were fortunate to access um, a team who are not one of the ones that advertises under the security banner on the internet or anything. They were actually very much a, an underground kind of group doing some very serious work. And we were, the, the, the revelations that came through them were fascinating. We assumed there would be massive technology or it would be uh, you, you know, a very sophisticated outfit. And in fact, it's, it's based on psychology and their technology is basically three mobile phones, which we um, faithfully um, replicated in our, in our 